Hello and welcome to Fifth Gear in scorching Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit cold. Yeah. We're on holiday in the UK together by mistake. Here's the scenario. You want to go camping, but life on the canvas just doesn't cut it. What do you do? Well, how about a camper van or a caravan? JP and I are going head to head with two different touring setups, each sleeping four people and each worth around 60 grand to see which is best. Do you go for a car and a caravan combo or do you go for a dedicated camp van? You want a caravanette. A caravanette, a term that nobody's used since the 70s apart from Jason Plato. I've got this luxurious Mercedes Marco Polo caravanette forward slash camper van. Prices for these start at £50,000, although my spec'd up model, the 250D Sport, is a little bit more. While I'll be trying out the Antares 485 Caravan, this costs around 20 grand, which means I've got enough cash left over to bolt this smart Volvo XC60 to the front, and I'll be testing that as well. Everybody hates a caravan. They clog up the roads, you can't get past them. We've got two days to decide which one offers the best overall camping experience and value for money. Let's camp. I want to have a look at yours. Camp right off. Come on. I sort of feel like I'm dressed for a holiday. I've <laughs> right. arrived and the climate is not as expected. I am regretting putting my baggy shorts on this morning. <laughs> You can knock caravans all you like, but one thing you can't criticise is the space, particularly when you're a six foot three camper like me. Just look at my luxurious double bed. Imagine, you know, when you're tired and you just can't be bothered. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just want to get straight on. Like so, like that. That is a full size fridge, real storage. Look at this, full height again for all my suits. That's a full width bathroom. A oh, proper loo as well. Proper lab. I've got bathroom envy now. This is currently a lounge area, or at night time, either two singles or a double. So, this is the Caravelair 485 and Terrace. What do you think? It's all right. Well, yes, it is all right if you like flat pack furnishings. But as I've spent a fair bit of time in big American style motorhomes at various race circuits, the Marco Polo was the obvious choice of the two. Oh, look at Check that. It is slick. So, this is the caravanette. <laughs> and this is the kitchenette in the caravanette. Well, first of all, uh, flooring. Hello. I like it. Mercedes have teamed up with camper van specialist Westphalia to design and fit this plush bespoke interior, which Mercedes claim is reminiscent of a hotel bedroom. We've got a larder fridge. Nice. Hob. A hob. Very nice piano black finish here. I've got a sink for me to do with flat and a wash in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be awkward. My dining table. I was wondering where that was. There's no doubt it's a clever use of limited space. Well, table for one. Whoosh, this pops up. Double bed upstairs. Yeah. Cubby up there. Look at this. So you've got a bit of stowage going on here. Soft yeah. That's better you know, than my kitchen at home. Do you know what? It's good quality. It's it? built to last, and I think that's immediately apparent. <laughs> See? He's on it. He's on it. I hate to admit it, but as well-packaged and well-finished as the Marco Polo is, the caravan's greater room gives it the edge so far. But the proof is in the driving. So, it's time to up sticks and get a move on to the campsite. And I suspect Mr Smith is going to find towing that big thing a bit of a bind. But I've got a luxurious Volvo to do the donkey work for me, Jace. You're basically driving a big van. Goodness. I'm not going to lie, trying to get this caravan over this little bridge is a bit of a challenge. Johnny, are you, are you doing that on purpose, going that slow? Did you see how close to that wall I was? Well, you chose the caravan, mate. Oh, no. There's a car. And then there's another problem, clogging up the road and slowing up the oncoming traffic. <sighs> You've got to wave at people and be extra considerate as a caravan, and because you are annoying people wherever you go on the road. I can't cope. I can't cope. It's just taking way too long. I'd choose vroom over room any day. 
Do you know what? This Marco Polo from Mercedes-Benz, it's a pretty nice space to be, actually. It's comfortable, it drives well. 2.5-litre engine, diesel, obviously. It'll do 16 under 10 seconds, and it'll top 130 miles an hour. So you can get places on the continent pretty quickly. Yeah, but remember, for about the same money, I've got a whole caravan and an XC60, which was the best-selling premium SUV in Europe when it was launched. So there. It's comfortable, it's luxurious, it's very quiet. This can tow up to 2,400 kilos of braked load. So we're on the road and settling into our ride. So far in our big camper van versus caravan challenge, we've checked out the fixtures and fittings. I've got bathroom envy now. Before hitting the open road. Oh, no. There's a car. To have a look at the driving and manoeuvrability skills of our respective rigs. I've chosen the 60 grand Mercedes Marco Polo camper van, and I'm very happy with its agility and speed. I can't cope. It's just taking way too long. Whilst for about the same money, I've gone for the extra space in the Antares 485 Caravan, towed along by a stylish Volvo XC60. But now we want to find out what they're like to drive in an urban environment. Well, as urban as you can get, you know, up north in Dales. Have we chosen the narrowest village to tow a caravan through? Oi, Plato, is this your idea coming through here? No, uh, but it's not bad, is it? It's a beautiful village, although I'm spending most of my time looking in my mirrors. And big extension mirrors are a must for us caravan drivers who have no vision through the car's rear window. While I've got no problem whatsoever when it comes to looking backwards. Leaving Johnny to negotiate tight gaps. Oh, mount the curb. Uh... I'll make a break for it. We'd arranged to meet at a calf down the road, and it wasn't long before I got to the RV point and stretched my legs with a nice cup of Yorkshire tea. Dull, aren't they? Caravans. Yeah. Marco Plato, how are you? I'm good. That's stone cold. Is it? Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how long have you been? Well, I've been a little bit longer than you. Oh, oh no. I've been leaning on your wonky mirror, on your, on <laughs> you your, on your mirror accoutrement. Eight. Come on, we've got to go. Already? Well, yeah. Dusk was closing in and we need to get to that campsite. So I'm actually not really parking? I'm off. All right, well, onwards. So, in a clear demonstration of the ease and convenience of the Marco Polo, I simply started the engine and headed off. But before I could leave, I had to try and turn this beast around. This is where it, it's sort of more stressful than it ought to be. If you're thinking of buying one of these, make sure you've got a degree in trigonometry so you can actually work out how to move the thing. Kind of landlocked a little. Plato. Mate, what are you doing? Where are you? Uh, I'm still in the car park where you left me. What, are you still trying to get out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You will be there and you'll put your towel down first. However, I've got the bigger bedroom and the bigger kitchen. Eventually, I was back on the road. Well, I've probably got time to get a cup of tea on, maybe have a shower, something like that, because he's going to take his time getting here. We are nearly at our overnight stop. I suspect Mr. Marco Plato will be already there, and he might have a bit of a surprise because I've chosen the overnight stop. But I'd already arrived at the campsite. Well, if you can call it that. This is a field. I've got a good toilet on board with all the chemicals. I've got water. I know what I'm doing. Parked up, all I had to do to transform the interior of the Marco Polo into a lounge was spin around the front seats. That's easier said than done. <laughs> and then, roof up. Now we're talking. It's going to be tight. So, setting up for me, except possibly the seats, has been a short and straightforward affair. <laughs> Smell nature. You told me this was going to be a campsite. No, I so said we're going to camp. I'm not seeing a, a toilet block, a shower block. <laughs> not seeing any of that. Behold, toilet block, 
shower block. I mean, that is lush, isn't it? Oh, my, my. my. But before I could enjoy any scenery, I needed to get the caravan set up for the night. Jockey wheel down, handbrake on. I've got to do the corner studies. I reckon he was only helping me because I said I'd let him use the caravan's facilities. I reckon I'd be a good pit crew, Plato. Come on, pub's open. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Johnny? Yes? How do I flush the loot? Oh, don't. You haven't already. Take up the slack on this bad boy. After 45 minutes of precision levelling, my mobile home from home was ready. As it was getting late, we ditched the idea of trying out our respective kitchen facilities until breakfast. It came up with a much better idea. To the boozer for chicken in a basket and a cold one. Or two. With the sun setting and no jackets, it was time to head back to camp and heat up a bit. Yeah, but I'm pre-warmed. You're pre-warmed? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had the heaters on since all the way at the pub. I can hear it. Step into the sauna. Just fit How hot? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. It's like... <laughs> what have you set Quick. it to? What have you set it to? 38. 38? Yeah, it's on... It's on... It's on care. <laughs> <laughs> With the Marco Polo all nice and cosy, I just had to decide where I should lay my head for the night. I'm tempted to try a bit upstairs and then try down here and see which one I like the best. I think this is a bigger bed. So after tucking Jason in for the night, I headed back to my much colder van and settled down. And after a night in our respective wagons, it's time to get up and discuss how we slept. It's really comfy up here, actually. Now, this is where I desperately need a shower now. Or do I just not bother? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You up yet? Well, morning. I slept very well. Did, did you sleep well? Yeah, I slept well in there. The only thing is, because it's so small, you've got to stay organised. There's nowhere to put anything. At least with this, you can just leave it. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's a lot of storage space. I'm starting to understand these now. I like just waking up and pulling back my curtains and going, I'm in the middle of a field, there's a fresh poo by your feet. Yeah, well, that was not there last night. So where have you put the food then? Where's the food? We haven't got the food, we didn't get any. We just drove... You, you were meant to get the food. No. And so with that, it was off to get some breakfast supplies. And this is where my setup comes into its own, cos I can simply detach the Volvo and pop to the shops, whereas Plato would have to stow everything away in his van before he could go anywhere. Volvo are on fire at the moment. I, I mean, this drives really pleasantly. I like a Volvo, actually. I think they make brilliant cars. They're understated. They've got an ooze of elegance. However, I soon found a serious flaw. What are you doing? In the sensible Swede. Car turned off. Don't. That's the honour. No, don't. No, yeah, but I'm just imagining I was a child. And kids no, can I do don't that. need to really imagine. I'm poisoning, <laughs> Jason. You shouldn't be able to do that. Perhaps not the best spot for the car's start stop button. Right, look, it's a shoppish. Oh, oh this, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. And I'm not getting any angel delight. Yeah, right. you will. Bacon got, it was time to get our breakfast on and test the merits of our camping kitchens. See, there is something really nice about cooking out in the middle of a field. First things first, I've got a much bigger kitchen area. Look, I'm standing up, I've got a full oven. I've got an electric hob as well, if I want it. That's a chopping board, uh, so if I want to do any prep... It is awkward. You've got clean down between each process Otherwise, you've got no space to do anything. It takes about 20, 30 seconds for the hot water to come through. That is quite hot, actually. Go that way. Oh, yeah, there it is. There she blows, look. Right, let's go and see how Johnny's getting on. Oh, yeah. That is a hearty two-stage camping breakfast. Ah! Oh, Have you done yours yet? Yeah, welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Come in. I don't know what plane is. I'm not up on my planes. Time to assess each other's assets. So then, Johnny, caravan, caravanette. OK, so, when you're not using this, it just sits. That probably sits less, cos you can use it as a family car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it for day trips. It's all integral. You don't have to unhook. You don't have to have a tow bar. Residual value on those is high. People desire those when they're second hand. That's interesting, isn't it? Caravan loses on the residual values quite heavily. But here we are sitting in my caravan having breakfast because it's a more pleasurable place to sit. I get a full kitchen. Full-size bed. 
full-size bag. I've got a shower with like, actual hot water. How much is it for a shower? A fiver. <laughs> the image of your Marco Polo there, people know it's expensive. It looks expensive. It feels expensive. The finish of this is not on the par no, of that. No, no. But it's infinitely better space, isn't it? It's a perfectly good space, and you can choose what you tug it with. So I've gone for an expensive road car. It's a great car, that. <sighs> See, it's a bit of a gassy bird. Ordinarily, I'd want to sit here for another half an hour and just let that digest. Can we not? We've got to get cracking. And we have to pack up. So, after 24 hours on holiday together, we're still very much undecided on the coolest camping combos. To try and settle the debate once and for all, we hopped into each other's rides. I got the van. I can hear Plato's wine bottles clinking around in the back. Whilst I battled with the towing woes. It's ages since I've done any towing, and you kind of forget just how cumbersome these things are. Welcome to the game, my friend. This is what I spent all of yesterday doing. I was enjoying the easier ride. I mean, immediately, it's so much easier to drive than towing anything. Good driving position, way posher than you expect from a commercial vehicle. And it wasn't long before we'd made our decision. For a camping trip, I would choose a caravan, simply because whilst it's not very nice towing these things, the actual experience when you get there is much better and it does what it says on the tin, whereas the camper van, unfortunately, doesn't really deliver. From the outside looking in, one of these Marco Polos, they are very well executed, they look great, but I think once you've pitched up, the reality is maybe slightly disappointing. You're paying a lot of money for a cramped space. If I was paying £66,000 for a camper van, I want to be able to take a poo. Agreed. If I was spending this kind of money, I would want my own throne. So I'm going to go for the caravan, but I'm actually, I don't want to drive it back, so can we swap now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's always a clause with you, always a clause. So the caravan and car combo wins. Bravo, Volvo and the Antares. 